So uh, first I wanted to update you on what's happening with our latest Mars mission, the, the InSight mission. Um, if you remember, it's got two primary instruments. There's a seismometer to look at uh, Mars quakes and try to use that to, uh, to model what the interior of the planet is like. And then the second instrument is this heat flow device, which is designed to burrow um, about five meters, say 15, 16 feet beneath the surface and measure how much heat is escaping from the interior of the planet, which tells you also a lot about the, the structure of the core, uh, whether it's a solid uh, core or, or liquid. And uh, this was uh, shortly after landing, um, Thanksgiving-ish last, uh, last fall, uh, sort of a selfie of the rover. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep saying rover, lander, this doesn't move. Um, and uh, this was before they deployed the instruments. Um, and so here we are with both of the instruments deployed. So here's the, uh, the seismic experiment, here's the heat flow uh, device. And then these uh, cables are, are uh, leading back to the, to the lander. That's how the instruments get their, uh, both their power and the data back and forth. Oops. So the, uh, I think it was mid-February is when they started to deploy the, uh, the heat flow probe. And uh, this uh, tube on this end contains a, it's sort of like a, a little uh, stake, if you will, that you drive into the ground. It's about that long. And uh, I have a, a video here in a second showing you how it uh, drives itself into the uh, surface. It's essentially a mini pile driver that has a weight that keeps pounding up and down. And uh, I think this is the, uh, the animation of, of how that works. So this is the, the mole, and uh, here is all of the, the tether that gets uh, deployed behind the, the penetrator to uh, allow the, the data to uh, be retrieved from under the surface. So here's the, the mole itself. This, uh, pointy-ended uh, stake, and inside of that um, there's a, a motor, electrical motor, and uh, some springs and a, a weight at the end. And so you sort of wind this up and then the spring pushes it down with a fair amount of force and then it, uh, it keeps doing it over and over again. And they figured it would take uh, maybe 20,000 individual strokes to burrow as deeply as they wanted. And uh, the idea was along the way, um, they can actually heat the probe and there are temperature sensors on the tether that's left behind. And they detect the, the temperature rise from the heated probe. These are roughly every uh, 30 centimeters or so. And, uh, and that's one measurement. And then once the uh, probe is totally deployed, then they, they don't heat it anymore and they just wait for, uh, for the temperature equilibrium to be reached. And, and then any differences you see from bottom to top are due to the flow of heat from the interior of the planet. So that's a very major piece of what they're looking for. Unfortunately, they uh, started doing the deployment sequence 
and uh, the, uh, the mole stopped after about 30 centimeters. So it got about that far, they think, out of the bottom of the, of the device, and since then, every time they start pounding, it wobbles back and forth a little bit, but it doesn't really uh, penetrate any deeper than what it already is. And uh, this is uh, just a time lapse. They're actually pounding every uh, couple of seconds here. And uh, the thing, you, you see the, the angle of the sun changing, but if you look really carefully, you'll see that the whole thing is shifting slightly to the side and it's also tipping the front end of it down as it proceeds. And uh, so there's three possibilities that the instrument team has come up with. One is that the, there's a mechanical blockage of some sort. Either the tether is snagged and it's not able to unsnag it, or you know, somehow the, the mole is stuck in the, in the uh, interior of that uh, uh, of the device. So that's one possibility. The second possibility is they've hit a rock. And they thought uh, they could get around about 15 centimeter diameter rocks, that if there was something that big under them, by continuing pounding, they would eventually either move the, the probe slightly to one side or the rock would slide the other way and then they would be able to break through. Um, the third possibility is what they're actually testing right now and that's that they've somehow gotten into an area with very cohesive material. They'd expected the, the top surface that they're burrowing into to be very loose. Um, and if instead it's very cohesive, um, that can cause problems. You actually need friction on the side of the mole to keep it in place. When you hit it once, it drives it down. Otherwise, it just rebounds, and so it sort of bounces up and down. And the difference in this material, imagine when you go home, if you care to do this, get a little cereal bowl and fill it with flour and tamp it down a little bit and fill another bowl with sugar or salt and uh, put your finger in both of them. The, uh, the sugar or salt, it's gonna collapse and it fills the hole in. The, uh, the flour, it leaves the hole behind. And so that's the, right now, the leading possibility of what's happening is, is they've basically burrowed out a cavity underneath the, uh, the uh, heat flow probe and, uh, and they're not able to, to actually get it any farther. And so they're, they're testing uh, all of these scenarios on the ground to see if they can figure out um, what's happening. Uh, the one test that they did on Mars was listened to the pounding of this thing with the seismic experiment. And it's very sensitive and you can tell uh, what's happening inside. You get the sort of the ringing of the mechanism itself. And they thought if the, uh, there's a hang up in it somewhere, the, the time between strokes would be about 50 milliseconds or between uh, um, sort of the reverberations, the echo of, of the, the stroke. And if it was actually penetrating the way it should, it'd be about twice that, so 100 milliseconds, a tenth of a second. When they've measured it, they came up with 70. So doesn't really tell them what they need to know. So that's where we are right now. Uh, they've sent an exact duplicate of the, um, of the heat flow probe to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. The instrument team that built it is actually in Germany. And this is where we get hung up with uh, government policies. It takes about a month for something like this to clear customs. And they're still waiting for it to arrive in California. So 
for the moment, it, I mean, it seems healthy unless there is sort of a blockage inside. Um, they've got you know, a lot of lifetime left in the pounding mechanism. So uh, you know, they, they're not ready to give up yet. But at this point, they're not getting any useful data either. So uh, that's, where we, that's where we are. But to end on a more positive note, the uh, seismometer, just today, they released uh, some results from that that they've detected the first detection of a Mars quake uh, from this. And uh, this is a, a plot of the, uh, the energy and the, you know, how big the, the vibrations are. And they've converted that into audio. And so that's the Mars quake right there. And uh, they also can detect motions in the, the mechanisms on board, like the robot arm. So that's, uh, that's good news. That, that experiment seems to be working, although it, uh, they've said that the the amplitude of these, the, you know, the strength of the signal is very, very low, but it, uh, it actually is consistent with when the Apollo missions happened, we had seismometers on the moon, and they'd get little moon quakes that were related to the surface contracting. Uh, it gets hot during the daytime, and then at night it cools off, and eventually something pulls apart uh, at a very low level. And uh, so that, that's what they think they saw. They actually need a bigger signal to get the reflections off all of the different layers in the planet. And that could take something like a landslide uh, or a, a meteoroid impact where the, the surface gets thumped. And they uh, expect over the course of a Martian year, they should be able to detect maybe about a dozen of those higher amplitude uh, quakes. But at any rate, it, it appears to be working the way that they would expect. So good news, bad news. We'll keep you uh, updated on the, the temperature probe. And uh, I expect in the next month, they should have some of the tests in hand about the different types of materials. And we may, uh, may have some, uh, some plans in place for how to at least try to move forward. OK. So that's, uh, that's what we're hoping to, uh, to have, is, is this thing actually deployed instead of just barely poking out of the, of the instrument. And before anybody asks the question, because it's a very good question to ask, is, well, gee, can't they just pick this up with the robot arm and move it someplace else? And the problem is that once this uh, probe is even a little bit out of the, um, the mechanism, you can't move it. There's no way to wind the cable back up, the, the tether that's left behind it. And uh, even if you could pick it up, you put it someplace else, you've got this pointy thing at the bottom of it sticking out that much. It's not going to penetrate into the surface then. It would probably fall over sideways. So it's just uh, mechanically impossible to, uh, to do anything other than keep pounding. Okay.